Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to the third video in our step one ophthalmology review series. Today, we're going to cover everything you need to know about refraction and optics for you assembly step one. We're also going to talk about why you might need reading glasses as you age. So let's get into it. So firstly, we're going to talk about the normal eye. Then we're going to talk about nearsightedness, then farsightedness, why you need reading glasses. And then finally, we're going to finish with the stigmatism. Firstly, what happens in the normal eye? So you have this object, this cute puppy, for example, and you have light and light bounces off this object and it goes right into your eye which in itself is really cool. And I could talk about it for hours, but I'll save that for another video to save you a little bit of time. Then the light passes through the first layer of the eye called the cornea. Then it passes through this little guy called the lens. Then it gets inverted and focused on the back of the eye called the retina. And the retina sends the signals from the light to your brain to tell you there's a cute angel of a puppy on your screen. Next is nearsightedness, also known as myopia. There's a lot of different things that can cause nearsightedness, but for now, I just want you to think of one. The eye is too long. Let me show you what I mean. You have this eye, this very long eye, but light comes through the same way as it did before. It's gonna hit the lens, but this time it's gonna get focused in front of the retina. So by the time it gets to the back, it's not a clear image and what you see is blurry. So that's no fun. How do we fix it? Well, glasses, of course, or contacts, I don't judge. But what kind of glasses? For nearsightedness, you wanna use diverging lenses. So when light comes through them, it spreads the light rays out. So when those light rays hit the lens of your eye, your lens is able to focus up right on the retina and you get a clear, happy image. Next is farsightedness, also known as hyperopia. And it's essentially exactly the opposite of nearsightedness. Who would've thought far is the opposite of near? So this time you have an eye that's too short. So light comes through and passes through the lens as usual, but because the eye is too short, the light gets focused behind the eye and you end up with another sad, blurry image. So what do we do about it? Well, considering it's the opposite of nearsightedness, can you guess? Just kidding, I'll just tell you. You're gonna use converging lenses. So if you have the light coming in, as usual, it's gonna hit these glasses or contacts and it's gonna converge the light rays. So when it hits the lens, again, it can focus right on the back of the retina and you get a nice clear image. So then why do you need reading glasses? What's that all about? What does that have to do with any of this? Well, the lens isn't just a stationary piece of glass like it is in glasses or contacts. It's a pliable piece of protein that you can stretch into different shapes for when you're looking at objects at different distances. So when you're looking far away, the lens is pulled flat, so light just comes straight through and converges on the retina. But when you're looking at close objects, you want the lens to be more rounded so you can bend the light so you can get the clearest possible image of that closer object. But what happens when you age is that the lens loses this elasticity and you can't pull it into the rounded position anymore. So you're essentially just stuck with vision that's set at distance and this is called presbyopia. But what can you do about it? Well, essentially you just stick a magnifying glass right in front of your eye and it converges light the same way the lens would if it was rounded. And this magnifying glass that I'm talking about is what we call reading glasses. And these reading glasses bend the light for you so that it can focus on the retina and you can see your books clearly. Lastly is astigmatism. You remember the cornea, the thing I was completely ignoring earlier? Well, here's where it comes up. The light doesn't just go straight into the lens and start bending. First, it has to go through the cornea. And normally the cornea is nice and smooth and light just goes straight through it, gets to the lens, all is good. But with astigmatism, the cornea is irregularly shaped. And when the light comes through it, it doesn't bend the light quite right, especially at night, all right? So you get some light hitting the retina in a lot of different places and you get this weird visual distortion that looks kind of like this or like this or like this. And again, we can fix it with some glasses, but they have to be cylindrical lenses, which are out of the scope of this video. Okay, that's gonna be it for Refractor Bears. As always, there's gonna be a PDF of all of this info and some Anki cards to go with it in the description to help you study. And if you wanna learn a little more about the eye, be sure to check out some of the other videos in the series. Okay, see you next time.